What's good everybody, it's your boy Humbles from Arthur Gaming and today guys, I'm coming to you with a brand new Dark Warrior deck profile but before we get into that, I'd like to announce the winner of the Widow Anchor giveaway and that is... Hikotori and uh, congratulations Hikotori, we will be contacting you directly um, to work out any arrangements that you want, the Widow Anchors, like uh, your address and everything like that um, without further ado guys, we're going to get into the deck profile before that, I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel, you know helping get to that massive 2k sub mark and we will be doing another insane giveaway at 3k subs. If you guys want to support the channel, make sure you check out the links in the description below. Uh, join the Patreon and check out our Discord server. It's bumping and we always welcome new members. Without further ado guys, let's get straight into the deck profile. So starting off guys, we play the one Armageddon Knight and the one Dark Greffer. Um, super X, X, uh, yep, exactly. The self-explanatory. Um, yep, self-explanatory. Um, it just makes sense to play these cards. Like, why would you not play these cards? Then we're going on to... Trouble Vision Hero Vion. Exact same thing because you're playing the Destiny of Malicious. It's just a starter card. Like you just want to get to a soul, like you want to open a soul, then super broken. Um I can rant about these cards, but the comment section always complains about it, so I'm not gonna do it. These are your best uh starter cards or second best starter cards that you can see in your deck. Um obviously don't change anything about that. The best starter cards that you can see are Triple Neo Space Connector and then Triple Neo Space and Aqua Dolphin. So the reason why this is really insane is that you can normal summon the space connector, bring out the Aqua Dolphin, and rip a hand trap out. Um, and it's really good, like this is probably your best start in your deck because you can go into a sold or your nightmare plays depending on what happens. Um, also the main thing that you can do is, uh, the reason why I'm playing 3 Aqua Dolphin obviously is because you want to see the card in your opening hand because being able to normal summon the Aqua Dolphin and then pitching the danger into the graveyard to trigger the danger effect while ripping a hand trap out is, is like super important. Like your opponent's already neg one and then anything else you do from that like you just plus infinitely. So you shouldn't change these. Originally I was testing these at a lower uh, count. But the way that I have it now I think it's it's super perfect. Wow. So not going to change that at all. Um, going into the extenders I'm playing triple junk forward and the one photon thrasher. So if you guys haven't noticed yet this is really similar to Dinka Boy's uh, third place list. And I took a lot of inspiration from it. Um, yeah, the triple junk forward and thrasher, the only complaint I have about this deck is I want to up the thrashers just because people are attacking border now and it's harder to out the card. So having Rhoda with thrasher, you have three uh, ways of getting, of outing the border, sorry, and this deck does sort of hard loose to the border. Yeah, and that's it for the war extenders. No butter supply just because you do play the dangers and you do play um, the orcas cards and normal summoning those in conjunction with butter supply doesn't really help you at all. So you want to be able to further the game stay as much as possible with all the monsters that you have and Butterspy just conflicts with the dangers. Then for the PK cards, of course, we just play the one and the one. Um, the best ratio in my personal opinion. You can you can play two boots, but I don't think you have the space or the capacity to play this card. If you open any of these cards, like you still have full combo. If you open both of them, you still have full combo because you play the dangers and you're going to be consistently discarding to search these. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, and the PKs are insane. Then for the So that's it for the Warriors. Now moving on to the Orcus engine, play two Orcus Nightmare just because this card is a brick if you only play one and you draw it. Um, and you don't want to play the level one Brass Bombard because that card is completely poo. So you play the two Orcus Nightmares, then you play the one Harporer and the one Symbol Skeleton. Um, the reason why these cards are really insane is Harporer will summon from deck and Symbol Skeleton can reborn from grave. Um, and he can foolish anything. So when you're done the combo you use the shuffle back Symbol Skeleton so you have uh, an alternative play next turn. And it's really good. And then the one wand for the standard, either the Rusty play uh, to set up Azatha or the Ball Sword play. I've been seeing a lot of people, like you guys seen in my previous Orcus deck profile, I was playing 2-2. In this deck, like you're playing the three best engines in the game right now. You're playing the Dark Warriors, you're playing the Orcus Monsters, and you're playing the Dangers. So you don't really have space to up these, but I would definitely up these if I had the opportunity to. So that's it for the Orcus engine. Um, it's, it's really small, it's really light, nothing too crazy. Um, they they just get the job done and they help you tutor so much, uh, so many plays you have with the deck. So then going on to the dangers, of course you play three of the best danger, uh, danger Nessie when it's hit it searches. Play three uh, danger jackal, probably on par with the Nessie because sometimes in your combo you actually want this card to get hit so you can combo off. The three uh, snaky boy, danger suchinoko, really good, um, guaranteed special summon much like jackal and Nessie because Nessie can get these. The two danger Mothman, because this is, I think, the next best thing. Like, maybe I'm going to up this to three and cut um, well, a card that you guys will see. Just because, like, he's a level four, so you can bring off Jackalope. Um, he helps you extend your plays because he's a dark 
monster that's not a spellcaster or a wing beast, and you will see why that's important later on. Um, and he helps you filter your hand if he gets hit, so if you draw the Nightmare, you can pitch the Nightmare, and you just plus infinitely. Then for the one of dangers, playing the one Chupacabra, because Chupacabra is a, is a level 4. Um, it summons him, it reborns any of these to extend, and he is an extender as soon as you have Danger Gaver. So it becomes a guaranteed extender to continue your plays. One Thunderbird and one Bigfoot, because going second they come up, and even going first, like having a Bigfoot on board when you Aqua Dolphin, you rip out the Thanos from their hand, because you can play through every other hand trap, so you don't really care. So you summon the Bigfoot, you look at their hand, even if they don't have any hand traps, you can rip a Kaiju out of their hand and stuff like that. Um, it's really good, like this Danger Count, I wouldn't really change anything. I just think that these cards are the best as is. I, you wouldn't play Ogopogo just because he doesn't really help you at all in this deck unless you play Triple Chupacabra because then Ogopogo can set up a Chupacabra play. Like you go Ogopogo, dump Mothman, Chupacabra effect, um, some of the Mothman, but I don't think that's that good. So that's it for the danger count. Um, so those are the three best engines of the deck, and now we're just playing the tech card. So I'm playing the world's famous, everybody's favorite thick boy, Steam the Coke, and then the Zephyrus the Elite. I'm not playing the power tool uh, build, as you guys will see, but these cards are just super important in the deck, like Steam being able to summon any token, and Zephyros being able to bounce any danger that you have. So, say you summon the Bigfoot, you Aqua Dolphin, and you just have a Zephyros in the graveyard, you just bounce the Bigfoot, summon it, and then use Bigfoot's uh, effect again to summon itself, or it gets hit and you break wards with it. So that's really good. And it's a 4 and a 3, so you can go into Yazzie with it. Then I'm playing the Triple Distrudo Mirmur, and this is the card that I'm sort of hesitant on. I want to cut Mirmur because, I'm um, sorry, I have no space in the deck for the Link people like you guys will see. And Mirmur is a water monster, so when I'm Orcus comboing and I summon the Yazzie, I can't summon the Mirmur, so Yazzie just becomes a poor Diamond Direwolf, and I don't really like it. Um, going in the future, maybe I'll cut the Mirmur and the one Distrudo uh, to fit in more warrior cards or like Iblis and stuff like that. But as of now, it's really good. And Distrudo being able to be that other level 4 or being able to get Yazzie to be the Epidemic uh, target is really good. Like, pay half for your life points to win the game, why not? So that's it for the monster cards. Um, moving on to the spells, you play, of course, Triple Cobble out of the Grave because you're playing a combo deck. And then you're playing Triple Aqua Dolphin on top of that. So you're basically playing 6 ways of ripping uh, cards out of your opponent's hand. So you're playing Gumblar in the deck, basically. Uh, confirmed right here, you heard it from me author, uh, at Author Gaming. Cobble the Grave is the new Gumblar Dragon. Um, it, it just, it's unfair, it's a really good card. Wouldn't really change anything about that. Obviously, 3-3, three, three, like, helping resolve your cards is always good. For the Coast Spells, you play the best of Coast Spells known to man. Uh, Living Fossil, Our Future, Max Rarity, Axe of Fools. Look at that. Um, the Divine Sword and the DDR. DDR is the best extender in this deck because Divine Sword literally banishes to get the DDR. Like, this is a two-card combo in the graveyard, like, late game. This is a two-card combo. Um, basically winning the duel because you just go uh, Divine Sword, banish any two warriors, then DDR pitch. Be born the Armageddon and kill him because you're good. Understandable. Yeah, um, that's it. Like, you wouldn't add any more cost spells because you don't want to play the power tool build anymore because it doesn't really help. Um, just because you give a lot of resources to it. Um, back then, like, with the Rongo deck, it was insane because trouble DDR. But right now, like, you wouldn't change anything. And our future is really relevant now in the back row heavy format. Um, Limb Fossil and Extender. Like, opening these cards, like, is, this, is, like, literally the nuts. Anything else, you don't really care. And... So then, have you changed your opinion on Autonomous Action Unit, or no? No, Autonomous Action Unit sucks. Like, you are, you played Distrudo and Zephyros, so you're already going down to, like, 3k life points. You're playing Autonomous Action Unit, you're going down to 1500. A Trickstar player is going to slow play you. Um, Konami used to change the time rules because you're going to get slow played, so I'm not paying life points. So then, Axe of Fools, best card? Axe of Fools confirmed, best card. You heard it from me. If you want Axe of Fools, hit me up. I got some OTS comments that I can definitely move for 50 cents plus shipping. You know the deal. Um. Anyways, moving on to the spell cards. We're playing the one of God cards. You're playing the one monster born. It literally reborns a monster. You're playing the one uh, foolish oh, burial baby. card of Magicka. Um, and it's really a good card because um, uh, it just dumps anything. Like say you normal arm getting it, it gets asked for whatever reason because they're ignorant players. You just foolish burial the malicious anyways, and you say re, and then you just uh, combo off and uh, look at them as they are flustered with their common ash blossom that doesn't really negate anything. Um, then I play the one OG Rota. Um, the meme we have going on with this card is you can't ash it because uh, it says move one monster. It doesn't say add one monster. But of course you can ash it. I'm only trolling. Um, but yeah, these... Unless it's a common ash. Unless you use a yeah, if ash. it Yeah, yeah. If it's a common ash, then you just look at your opponent and you keep playing. Um, if they call judge, you just look at the judge and you keep playing. Um, mm -hmm. If they call head judge, you look at head judge and you keep playing. Um, and you don't really care. But yeah, so that's it for the one of god cards. Then, of course, you play the one uh, rank up launch just because you like ash without and you like... Uh, VFDing your opponent and then killing him after, so 
really good card. Then the one orchestrated babble or orchestra babble. Um, it's the field spell. Like it helps you set up long gears to plays. It helps you set up um the eradicated play if you can't get to the long gears. You just um use the nightmare, dump the wand, and target Galtea, and then she goes to I think twenty five, and then you can eradicate it. So this is a really good card. Also, if they pop it, you can just get it back by pitching a danger and adding this back to your hand. So Babel's a really good card, underrated. Um, come Dane, this deck's gonna be insane. Maybe you don't even play it. So remember, guys, Dane is insane. Um, then for the PK traps, one shade and one fog blade. If you open any of these, you just get the other one. Um, yeah, it's, it sucks when you uh, mill like one of these off of the curious, but you if you have an extender, you don't care. Um, if you mill this, it does suck, but you can always just uh, reborn your PK monster with the fog blade and then use the shade, or you chain the shade. One curious goes to mill, so you're guaranteed to resolve this. And then for the last and final card I play is one eradicated epidemic virus, just because in the standard combo you're gonna be eradicating them. Um, and you just like against sky strike, you just call eradicated call spell, you win. Against alter you wait for end phase, you call trap and you win. Against salamander you wait for them to do a play, like a really average play when they set two cards with the one gazelle, and you just go eradicate epidemic and you win. Uh, most decks can't keep up with this deck. Like it's really similar to Goki in the fact that um, you just win. Um, they throw three hand traps at you and they say my money and they just lose. Um, so it's a really good deck. Like if you like playing decks that auto win, you just play this uh, deck. A lot of thinking goes into the combos, obviously. But if you know the deck, you know the deck and you're going to win. That's 60 in the main deck. Like I said, the more cards you play, the better player you are. So if you play 60 cards, you're the best player in the world. If you play 59, you're good, but you're not as good as me. So always play 60, don't change it. Going on to the Link Monsters, you play the one Nightmare Mermaid, the one Nightmare Cerberus, and the one Nightmare Phoenix. Um, these cards, well, you need Mermaid for the combo, of course. And then these cards, uh, obviously, you need the combo as well. I've been thinking about playing two Phoenixes just because we're in a back row format, like I've said. But it's not that good anymore because they just heat a reborn it. So your turn one combo, you're always going to be going to Cerberus and then into the Mermaid instead of the Phoenix, uh, avoiding the heat of play. If they do, because they just get a free like bomber play and stuff like that. These cards are needed in the deck. You shouldn't change them. You shouldn't add anything different. That's it for those Nightmare Monsters. Then, of course, I'm playing the best Link 2 to ever exist behind Electromite is Assault. Um, she's She just does it all. Like Opening this card lets you get into so many plays. Like I will show you guys combos after. Like Assault just insane. Love the card. Nothing much else to say. If I rant about it, you guys will complain. Okay, so is old Electromite Helix the top three? No. R r order them. Order them from Link 2's. Uh, Electromite? No, no. It's old Electromite, and then Galtea. So now this okay, Galtea, the Link 2. Okay. Um, Galtea is going to be insane come Dane because she just literally, if you open any of the Orcus uh, spell cards, you just search Climax and you win the duel because it's literally a Macabre or it's a Rota. So, like, it's, it's insane. And Galtea is really good because she helps you get so many resources back. Like, being a Dark Link 2, she lets you... Uh, you combo with Rusty, exactly, yep, that's what I was going to say. And, um, yeah, Galte is a really good card. And, of course, being a Link 2, like, it follows the whole shenanigans with the Link 2. And random effect, if it's linked, it can't be a shot battle. So, like, if your opponent keeps ramming you with Conductor, like, he's not going to kill this card. So, that sucks. Um, then, for the Link 3, I'm playing the Long Gearsu. This card, you, it's needed for the combo when you have the full combo. I'll show you guys, like, you're going to eradicate a Long Gearsu away. But it also works with Babel. Say your play got interrupted, you just end with the Long Gearsu here. And then they'll have like their uh, monster zone here. So as soon as they summon their monster, you can go long gear suit and then send to the graveyard. So another form of disruption if you get interrupted, like you get twinned or and stuff like that. So then it's like a quick effect send? Yeah, it's a quick effect send. It's like it's it's literally a quick effect in Gearsu. That's all it is. Um it's really underrated. And the good thing about this card is the monsters, it doesn't need to be pointed to the monster. So say your opponent makes a, a Saryuja right here. And it's pointing to three monsters, and then they go special red MD. You can go long gears to effect, and you can just send the red MD because it's linked with the uh, Saryuja. So long gears is a really underrated card. Wait, hold up. This card doesn't target? No, long gears doesn't target, so it just sends. It's really good. That's busted. Um, then the last nightmare, or one of the last nightmares I play is Nightmare Unicorn, just because like being able to ladder into um, Cerberus, pitch a card, uh, pop something, go into Unicorn, pitch another card. Like you bait out so much back row like when you're playing this deck, and your danger can be resolving as well. So this is the dangers that you would play. Really good, like, uh, I wouldn't change anything. I've been thinking about cutting Unicorn, but Unicorn just insane, like being able to spin cards back. Then we're playing some really broken Link 3s. We're playing Rusty. Uh, no explanation needed, like he tutors out everything. 
We're playing Curious. And also needed, needed like, Beatrice got hit on the ban list. Um, went to one. Curious should probably be banned because being able to dump any card and, like, the danger just make this card so easily. It's insane. And then the one Summon Sorceress. Like, all these cards don't need any explanation. You look at these cards, they should all be considered to be hit on the ban list. Nothing much uh, more needed to be said about that. Then for the Link 4s, you play the one Boral Sword Dragon. Just because if you go second, there is that... Um, any any two monsters goes into Boral Sword for 78. And then if they have any monster in attack position, it's just full game. Um, so nothing else to say about that. Then the one Nightmare Griffin, because in the combo, you're going to be making Griffin. So you guys can see, um, I'm literally playing every Nightmare that this that you can play in this deck. I'm playing every Nightmare. Um, I'm even playing uh, e Evil Storm, or whatever, Nightmare... Or just Nightmare. Nightmare. Um, I would play Ibli if I had the space, but like I said, I'll cut some cards. And if I do, I'll let you guys know. So those are the best Nightmares to play. And a lot, a lot of people don't know, um, Griffin himself, like, he stops Salmon in great plays. Because when they summon the Gazelle from their hand, it has to be pointed to a Baylinx or else they literally lose. And if you can interrupt that uh, Baylinx summon, they just can't use anything. Like, their normal summon is so crucial to the deck if you disrupt it. Say they go Will of Salmon Gates to summon the Gazelle from their hand. Like, it won't be able to trigger because uh, Griffin says um, non-link monsters can't attempt to activate their effects. So it's a really good card. Um, and then, yeah, the Boral Sword. And then the last monsters I'm playing is the Time Thief Redoer and the Azathoth. This is a really underrated card. Like having the card literally has three effects. And like the previous videos, my brother said, if card has three effects, it's broken. Redoer is insane. And then Azathoth just locks your opponent up from playing Yu-Gi-Oh. And then the one Yazi. This card is the card I'm considered cutting. I've been thinking about other cards like play like an Abyss Dweller or like Top Logic Bomber or like Chisbania. Just because like the only relevance he's come up for me is just being an Eradicator target. Like, going second, you don't play the Link Cuba, so it's harder to Boral Sword. Um, so, yeah. Wouldn't really change anything. And then, like I said before, like, side deck, it really depends on your local metagame. Like, if you want to play Lancias or Evenlies or Twins or Reboots or Kaiju or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. That was the deck profile, guys. If you guys are interested in combos or anything like that, like, let us know in the comment section down below. We'd love to show you guys it. Um, once again, guys, this is Hum from Arthur Gaming. Make sure you guys check out the Patreon. The link will be in the description. Huge thanks to everybody supporting us to the channel. Check out our Discord. It's bumping right now, like I said before. And again, guys, if you guys like the video, make sure you like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the notification bell. This is Hamza from Arthur Gaming. Signing out. Peace.